Alright, hello everyone and welcome back to Kotobo Space Program, where today we're having a look at yet another wonderful mod, this time in the form of Phoenix Industries' MAV-like Ascent Vehicle, which is being made by forum user CTN, and what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is, well, a... Mav-like ascent vehicle based off of, or inspired rather, by the movie The Martian. Now I say inspired by because it's not meant to be a screen accurate representation of the MAV from The Martian. It's meant to just be inspired by it and give it a bit more Kerbal of a feel, a bit more stock alike, which is why I think I prefer this over some of the other versions of the Mav that I have seen on the forums. And overall just a really cool little vehicle that adds a nice little extra bit of that glorious movie, The Martian, into the game, and who doesn't want that? So let's just jump right on into the VAB and have a gander at the currently three parts that make up this mod. So first, let us grab a Mark 1-2 command pod, as this is the command pod that these parts are sort of built around, and then head down to the fuel tanks, which is where we'll find two of the three parts for the mod, and the first we'll look at is this Phoenix Industries Ascent Vehicle Interstage, which is quite the excellent little part. It has a built-in generator, RCS thrusters, 360 liquid fuel, 440 oxidizer and 100 monopropellant and it is meant to go right smack on the bottom of the mark 1-2 and provide you with uh, essentially your orbital thrusters because well of course it does have the rcs for maneuverability when you'll be going for a docking after returning from the surface of the uh well i was about to say mars but no in this world duna and it of course because of that does have the lovely little rcs ports all throughout which is quite good for that maneuverability and of course it does have liquid fuel and oxidizer which is useful for these four mount points on the bottom where we can attach if we go down to the engines for lovely little spark engines or really if you have any other mods that add in small little engines you can just pop them right into place into these four attachment points to give you that little bit of extra oomph to get back to your main sort of uh, orbital vehicle orbital station or whatever you have and it's it's quite a lovely little addition I like the ability to pop in our own engines rather than just having built-in ones cuz again if you have other mods installed with cool little engines you can just slap those right in and you're good to go. Now back in the fuel tanks tab, we have the second part, which we're actually gonna need to scroll out for, or zoom out rather, and grab the Phoenix Industries Ascent Vehicle, and this is the main stage, and oh boy, look at that thing. It is just a very, very big piece. And, of course, it is chock full of a lot of liquid fuel and oxidizer at 1,440 liquid fuel and 1,760 ox uh, oxidizer. There we go. Flub that word somehow. Interesting. And also, similarly to the uh, interstage part, we have attachment points for multiple engines. Let's actually raise this thing up a little bit. There we go. And zoom in. Lovely. Now, as you can see here, we've got a couple of more attachment points. Points, but they're a little odd because if we do grab a 1.25 meter size engine, which is what these are built for, you'll notice you don't actually see these attachment points. They're kind of on the interior, like right there where the textures are overlapping. You can kind of see the attachment point, but from a first glance, you see nothing except for the center point, which is, of course, meant for the next stage in line. Uh, but you'll really want to be attaching, um, let's see, six 1.25 meter size engines in here and leaving this center attachment point open for the next part. But again, you have these lovely little, uh, I guess, inset would be a good word attachment points for six engines of whatever it is that you choose to use and then finally to attach to that center point if we scroll down a bit more and head to the utility tab we have the final part which is the phoenix industries ascent vehicle base which if we grab that and just sort of attach it onto that center point oh come on attach there we go excellent it is a pretty interesting little base. Now, it does have a uh, container for carbon dioxide, <laughs> and this is where this thing gets a little bit interesting, because even though it's not technically a crew command pod, it actually does have one crew capacity, and of course, as you can see here, an airlock, and it holds inside of it 
carbon dioxide. And it uses that carbon dioxide to create liquid fuel and oxidizer. So I, I actually kind of like that. You uh, make sure you have fuel cross feed because of course you're going to need a uh, you know decoupler here, have the fuel cross feed on. And these also have four engine attachment points here at the bottom. And this is really meant to be sort of your landing stage and whatever fuel you use from in here can then be refilled by the carbon dioxide in this uh, sort of base unit. And it of course uses the carbon dioxide along with the electrical charge, and it does have a resource intake, so it'll just pull in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. And it's, it's quite an interesting little piece. Now you may be thinking that seems a little bit cheaty, maybe a bit too overpowered, but the thing is, it's really freaking slow. I, I mean, this whole thing will use that entire carbon dioxide tank, which is only 0.9 almost instantaneously. It will take hours and hours, potentially even days, to fully restock your fuel container in here if you've used a fair amount of it. So I think it's quite actually balanced well uh, for the amount of resources that it uses. Again, here it's 2.5 carbon dioxide per second and 30 electrical charge per second to produce a mere 0.22 liquid fuel and 0.28 oxidizer. So you're not going to really be uh, just rolling around in the fuel there. So overall all pretty good and of course again we have these attachment points for engines uh, just whichever 1.5 meter or 1.25 meter size engines you desire just shove them right in there and you're good to go and that's of course meant to be your main landing section now let's grab one that I actually put together fully earlier which I just named of course MAV and let's load this baby up and as you can see we've got the nice landing legs I don't know why I put on these engines but I felt like it so there we go we've got that and of course, a lovely decoupler there attaching this base to our main MAV section and then going up to a separator and then our top capsule section here. Overall, a pretty good little vehicle and well, basically, uh, depending on what engines you choose, probably similar to what you would build with this thing as well. And let's just take it right out to the launch pad and have a gander first at how that whole base system actually does its uh, resource creation. So let's open up that and pin that tab. And let's activate the engines though on very, very low. So we just get a light burn, not enough to take off, but enough to drain a decent amount of fuel. And as you can see here, let's bring it down to it's a bit more visible. We'll bring it down to about 1700 on the liquid fuel. There we go. So 1705 on the liquid fuel, 284 on the oxidizer. And if we open this up, we can actually start uh, creating the liquid fuel and oxidizer from the carbon dioxide. But watch it how quickly it uses what's in the tank. I'm actually going to close the intake here so that we just use what's in the tank. And you'll see that it basically gave us nothing. We're still at 1705 and 284 on these two. It used all the carbon dioxide and a decent amount of electrical charge there, which actually for this to work completely. Oh, no, not ship lander. Let's use this so I can actually recharge the power on this baby. And let's open back up the intake and watch as it creates our liquid fuel and oxidizer, but at a very, very slow pace. And look at how quickly it is draining our fuel. And we have yet to go up to, oh, there we go, 1706 and 285. So we've gotten one liquid fuel and one oxidizer before all 151 electrical charge was used up. And it's, well, it always has carbon dioxide, so you really never have to worry about that. But yes, it took all the electric charge in our entire ship to get one liquid fuel and one oxidizer. This is why I think it's quite well balanced and won't really unbalance your game and not feel too cheaty because, well, you're going to need a whole lot of power and a whole lot of time for this thing really to make a difference. And of course, we'll just turn it off there so we're not using all this power. Let us bring the electric charge all the way back up, close all of you, and then watch as this thing flies, which of course is going to be different depending on how you build it, what engines you use, but overall should be fairly similar to it. So let's just take off. There we go. Now these engines are quite powerful. We could probably get all the way into orbit with this baby. 
but let's... Ooh! <laughs> I seem to have miscalculated on how strong that separatron, or a separator is up there. So let's actually stop moving you. Oh boy, there we go. And release, and fire up these engines. Excellent. So this would be your main stage that you'd be taking off from Duna with. That base, again, was is meant to be sort of your landing stage. This then being your manned ascent vehicle stage. And you go up, you should have enough fuel to get out of the uh, Duna atmosphere. And actually, let's see, once we run out of fuel on this stage, how far we are up in our atmosphere. So let's, of course, go to the map. And actually, not too bad. So about 25 kilometers up, which is pretty decent. Again, should be enough to get you out of Duna's atmosphere, uh, depending on, of course, <laughs> your engine choices. But overall, a very, very good little vehicle. And of course, we then have our final stage here with our just tiny little engines. Excellent, giving you that last bit of oomph to get up into space and into your, hopefully, waiting, orbiting, station or main ship to take you back to Kerbal here, but overall a very cool little vehicle and of course we do have the RCS ports as you can see, so we've got good maneuverability on this baby, you can go any which direction you want, which is always good. Uh, but yeah, that's that's really all I do have to show you with this, not a whole lot. If you would like to try out this mod for yourself, you can take a look at the link in the description as always, and I definitely say to give it a try, this is a pretty cool little vehicle, It's I mean it's only three parts so it's not exactly the biggest mod ever but I, I quite like it it's it's quite interesting I especially do like that base platform to it because well it does have that interesting mechanic for the carbon dioxide fuel uh, which is pretty cool and I also really actually do love this section here I love having this built-in cool good RCS and nice little engines attached to my capsule so I might keep this in my normal game just for this section honestly and then of course the manned ascent vehicle stage is also pretty awesome and perfect for getting off of a planet like Duna but yes that is going to be it for this episode I do of course hope you all have enjoyed and that you do come back for the next but until then thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one. Now I'm going to wait until my curl Kerbals throw up. Shouldn't be too much longer now, except for Jeb. He'll last. He always does. Later, folks.